Hey guys, it's Jeff with DI Oh My God Why. It's been a minute since we did a video, and this one's about something that I thought I was kind of done with, but uh, decided to do some proper legal work with. So, um, the Exocet, the Miata based kit car that I've been working on for years at this point. Um, you may recall if you've watched, uh, if you followed along, that I finished that thing up in terms of functionality and actually raced it and drove it last summer. Um, so it was. Uh, in working order, um, the big question mark being registration and how to do it and how to properly do it. So if I ever get pulled over, it's not a tow situation. It's just a, you know, you got a ticket because you're being dumb situation. So I wanted to go through this a little bit. Uh, I'm guessing this might be useful to some other builders uh, should any other frames make their way to Idaho. So um, the TLDR for this video is registered as a specially constructed vehicle. Uh, you have to have an inspector that is uh, easy to get along with and easy to work with. Um, I don't know any of the other ones in the state. Uh, I know the one in the city and he's great. So um, yeah, now we'll get into the long version. So Way back when, before I even bought the kit, I uh, I started talking with the DMV here to see what their stance was. The first you know attempt was basically like, yeah, it's a uh, it's a replica Lotus, Lotus Seven, because it's not too far off. It is not exact, but it's not that far off. So uh, went back and forth with them, tried to share some pictures that made them look similar. No dice, they were not having it. Um, asked about the specially constructed vehicle at that time, and they said basically what the law says, which is that it has to meet uh, safety standards for the year it was finished. So that's a bit tricky. I'll get to that in a bit later. So that kind of, at that point, was saying, nah, that's not going to work. Um, and then they had one other one, which is basically to register it as a, a UTV, essentially. Idaho is a little friendly on those laws. Um, so you can, you can drive them on the street, but not any state highways. And unfortunately, we're like all state highways. So like I, I autocross this thing um, or intend to do some more this summer. Uh, there are two ways to easily get to the autocross course from my house. Both take both take me entirely on state highways. So it'd be like impossible to actually get there. So I didn't really want to look at that either. That was no fun. Um, yeah, so for the time being, I figured let's leave it as a Miata. It's, uh, it is mostly Miata. That makes sense. Now, so I finished that, drove it around, and it just it made me nervous every time because uh, there's some just mismatches, like the insurance says Exocet, the, uh, whereas the title and the registration say Miata. And, uh, you know, if a cop came inside, he might just be like, this is not a Miata, and uh, could get me in some hot water. So starting um, late last year, I decided to look back into it again. Got the name and information of the local inspector uh, from my area and uh, reached out to him, kind of explained explained what I wanted to do and I decided to try it again as a replica to see what he said so uh, flash forward to uh, this would have been probably three weeks ago um, sometime in the middle of February this year uh, I finally had the time and the means to uh, to call him up again say the car is ready for you to come out and check and uh, he was nice came right over luckily the office is right around the corner very easy and it was a super snowy day so I put it in the carport he came over super super friendly guy Gave it a once over, kind of. I showed him where I put the VIN plate and the uh, and the serial number plate from the the car, and said, "Yeah, it's a, it's a replica." He said, "Okay, ten minutes. Here's all the paperwork. I'll go write it up." Uh, I hung out inside for a bit. Probably twenty minutes went by, and he came in. Um, he had the full mobile office set up in his vehicle, and he said, "This isn't the Lotus replica." And I said, "I, it's close." And he said, yeah, but it's not going to work. So at that point, he said he had to go back and do his research because he wasn't sure exactly how to do it either, which scared the hell out of me. So uh, about a week went by for me just kind of sitting there, like hoping that I could actually register the thing, um, knowing that, uh, you know, there's not a bunch that have gone through full registration in, uh, or there's not any of these and not a bunch of other kit cars around town. So just kind of sat and crossed my fingers and hoped. And then he called me back. Uh, let's see, that would have been about two weeks ago. And, uh, and said he had figured it out. We could cut, we could uh, do it as a specially constructed vehicle, and it should be relatively straightforward. He had some uh, generic kind of safety requirement or safety equipment that he recommended I get on there as soon as possible. Uh, the primary one was a windshield, which I totally agree with. Having driven the thing without one, it's just you catch things in the shoulder and the face. It's just not a lot of fun. So I could ride with a helmet, but I'm, I'm going to put a windshield on it anyway. So I'm going to listen to him on that. Otherwise, no specific comments. Basically, he stated that uh, I'm self-certifying that it meets what it needs to. So, uh, yeah. So about a week after that, I went into his office, uh, met with him again, brought in my um, proof of ownership for the Miata, being registration and uh, title of that. He had already seen the VIN plate on the uh, on the car, so uh, you know, essentially, he knew that that was the donor. Um, I offered to show him because I you know we have there's stamped VIN plates on. Um, 
on all other aspects or other parts of the car. He didn't need to. He was pretty cool about that. Um, and then I had the full invoice. I bought my kit through Flying Miata. So I uh, showed him that. And he said, you got to pay sales tax on this. And I groaned and said, okay. Because it's 6% here on what amounts to about a $10,000 bill. So 600 bucks out the pocket. But such it is. Um, so yeah, I brought all that in and, uh, brought the manufacturer certificate of origin too, that was needed. And he essentially assigned it, uh, a dual VIN with the Miata VIN and the new VIN. And, uh, we have it written up as a specially constructed vehicle. Um, I believe it is now a 2019 SCV Exoset is the, the exact ones. Um, but I, uh, he got it all done. Took relatively short amount of time. I took the paperwork into the uh, the DMV here yesterday, and they, uh, aside from some swearing at the computer, just because there were some some intricacies that didn't quite work due to how it, uh, how it was, they uh, they got it all registered. I got it plated. It's uh, it's all up to date. It's all good. So minor things that I'm still worried about. It's now registered as a 2019, which puts me in. Um, a, it's a little more expensive to register, not much, maybe $20 or $30 a year. I'll deal with that. The bigger thing there is emissions when they roll around. For the first five years, I believe, from the uh, year of manufacture, you don't have to emissions test. But past that, you do until it's something like 25 years old. So come 2024, um, if I still own the car, which is, let's be honest, a pretty low probability, I'm probably going to have to emissions test it. And I just don't know what it's going to do. I still have OBD2 on there. Um, unless I go full standalone ECU turbo, um, it will remain that way. So that's good. But the problem is when they plug it in, they, they say you're a 2019. It says, no, I'm a 97. And then it gets confused. So we'll see. I've had really good luck recently with some of the emissions guys around town. Like I took the bus down and the guy, uh, the school bus, the guy was super cool and he was really helpful and said, you know, this is how we're going to do this. It's not perfect, but we're going to make it work. So that said, um, We'll see. It's a, it's a long ways off. Um, other than that, I'm not too concerned. It's uh, it's minimal. Idaho's pretty lenient with inspections and whatnot. So if I do get pulled over for whatever reason, you know, the cop might say, you have to have this or this. I Fenders are probably going to happen. It's just a, I mean, a matter of time before somebody complains about it. Um, windshield, like I said, it's definitely going to happen. Otherwise, um, lighting and everything is up to, up to spec. Um, I don't know. The belts are kind of interesting. Because I think uh, passenger cars are supposed to have a true a proper three point with a button. Uh, mine's are mine are cam lock, so they're not as tricky as like a latch and link setup. But um, we'll see. So anyway, that is how it is done in Idaho apparently. So for the next builder in town or in in the state, I uh, I'm happy to to uh, to help you out. Hit me up through this channel. Hit me up through uh, I think we still have di oh my god why at gmail .com if you want to reach me via email. But um, the intricacy with that is going to be, it's going to be up to your, your local inspector. And I think that's actually really similar to how it's done in California. You have a certain you know, set of inspectors and depending on where you live, they're different and they might be harsher. So my guy was super nice saying like, you know, he gave it a good once over, said it's structurally sound. It looks fine. Let's do this. Whereas um, I hear some of the other jurisdictions, they might be a little more stringent. They might, you know, actually need you to get all the things that they think are necessary on the vehicle installed before they'll sign any paperwork so it might be more of a waiting game with that so in my case i should have this thing i should have the title in the mail any day now got the registration we're essentially uh road legal so it's awesome um i hope i get some chances to put some more uh miles on it i did get a little lift kit for it the uh paco motorsports three inch one so keeping an eye out for some wheels and tires to throw on there to have some fun with it it's been i mean it's a fun car as is but honestly if i want to go fast uh and uh, autocross and whatnot, I got the I got the Elise now, and that's faster and better in most ways. So it's kind of a kind of a toss up, but it's a fun car. I think it's going to be a blast. I'm going to be driving it around the summer uh, and enjoying it. So so that's that. That's Idaho. That's how we register the uh, Exoset in Idaho. Um, again, reach out with any questions if you're trying to do the same. Um, it's uh, and hopefully uh, yours goes as simply as mine. So stay tuned. The schoolie is underway still. It's just the slowest project in the world because we've had snow and I've been running a ton and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But backup camera's going in and then we're starting to frame out the interior. So it's coming along. Uh, flooring is all but done. I have one corner to finish in the front. And um, and then I, I'm actually going to be picking up a frame for hauling water around um, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, getting there slowly but surely. So stay tuned and talk soon.